I think, I believe, that I can help you understand the circle of fifths. Not just memorize key signatures, but actually understand it. Here we go. We begin with the way in which the piano keyboard is laid out. Eight white keys between octaves, with black keys in groups of two and three. But why is the keyboard laid out this way? Well, the answer to that question is a bit convoluted. But there is a why behind why the piano has 12 piano keys between octaves. And it's called 12-tone equal temperament. Basically, the frequencies between an octave have been divided into 12 equal intervals. These 12 intervals have been equally tempered, or equally spaced. And we know these intervals as half-steps also known as semitones. So however the keyboard evolved to appear as it does, we can say that the reason it looks this way is because of the wide acceptance of an octave being divided into 12 equally spaced frequencies. And these 12 piano keys between two octaves also reflected the widely accepted diatonic scale. The circle of fifths is therefore not some mathematical brute fact out in the ether, but rather a discovery of a pattern on the piano. The circle of fifths is a realization of several interesting facts on the piano. Here are two of them. Number one, every time you leap up a perfect fifth from one musical key to the next, you keep any sharps that the previous key has and you add to those a sharp 7th scale degree. Examples. The C major scale uses only white keys, so we say that there are no sharps and no flats in C major. It's all white keys on the piano. When you leap a perfect fifth up from C, you land on G. Using the major scale pattern of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, the G major scale will have one sharp, which happens to be F sharp, which is the seventh scale degree of G major. The seventh scale degree of a major scale is also called the leading tone. So we kept the sharps from C major, which are no sharps. Then we added a sharp leading tone, which is the note F sharp. So let's go up a perfect fifth from G major and we land on D. The D major scale retains the F sharp that we had in the key of G major, but also adds a sharp leading tone, which means that we add a C sharp, C sharp being the seventh scale degree of D major. Go up a perfect fifth from D major and we land on A. Same deal. We keep the F sharp and C sharp from the key of D, But in A major, we add a sharped leading tone, which means we add a G sharp to our scale. So the key of A major has three sharps. This pattern continues. E major has four sharps. Up a perfect fifth, B has five sharps. Up a perfect fifth, F sharp has six sharps, and so on. Number two. The sharp that you add for each key change also goes up by a perfect fifth. So G major has an F sharp, D major has an F sharp, and a C sharp. A major has an F sharp, C sharp, and a G sharp. E major has an F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and a D sharp. So this is another lens through which you can view adding sharps. As your musical key goes up by a perfect fifth, so do your sharps. So if the circle of fifths still doesn't make any sense at all, you might lack a good foundation of music theory upon which the circle of fifths is structured. And I have several videos that can help with that.